Would the counsel for the plaintiff like to make an opening statement at this point? Yes, sir. Thank you. And you're Mr. Thole? Yes, sir. Very well, Mr. Thole. Would you make an opening statement to the jury at this time? May it please the court. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, counselors. Isn't it curious how much we take for granted in our country? We never feel that somebody just might take our freedoms away from us until we are confronted with the question of exercising those freedoms. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my name is Leon Thole. My co-counsel are Maria Quinn and Scott King. We are representing the plaintiff, Pat Barron. Appearing as witnesses for the plaintiff are Pat Barron and Adrian Bell. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we will prove that Coach Bobby White, a 20-year veteran of the United States Army and self-styled patriot, arbitrarily denied our client, Pat Barron, the First Amendment rights that he possesses under the United States Constitution. But first, allow me to acquaint you with the facts of our case. Pat Barron is a not-so-typical 17-year-old. He is a junior at Alabama High School who writes for the school newspaper and is an outstanding athlete. Pat Barron has been in organized athletics most of his young life. At age 13, Pat lost the sight of his one eye. Although told he would probably not play sports again, Pat embarked on a self-motivated program and learned to play basketball in spite of his handicap. By age 15, he had become the captain and second-leading scorer of his junior high school team. Then came senior high school. Exhibiting the same intensity and determination, Pat went out for the basketball team in his sophomore year. That year, Pat wore goggles and they seriously affected his ability to play. Pat didn't make the team that year, but was determined that in his junior year, Pat would make the team. And it was just this past fall that Pat Barron impressed a number of people, including Coach Bobby White, with his ability to play. And it was at this time that Pat made the varsity team without wearing goggles. He was elated to be informed by Coach White on November 1st that he had made the team. The following day, the school physician conducted the routine physicals, and although these physicals did reveal Pat's visual impairment, Pat did pass the exam. Coach White was informed of these results on November 3rd. Pat Barron was not worried about these results. He continued with his busy routine, which included going to classes, practicing with the basketball team, and the preparation of an editorial for the school newspaper. The article he was preparing concerned American policy in the Middle East. That article was published on November 7th. The following day, November 8th, Pat Barron was summoned into Coach White's office. As he entered the office, he noticed the school newspaper opening his editorial open on the coach's chair. He was then shocked to learn that he was being cut from the team after he had been practicing with the team all week. It was at this point that he knew that he was being cut from the team because of the article he had written. And in order to hide his true intentions, Coach White told Pat Barron that he had to wear goggles in order to play on the team, knowing full well that Pat Barron could not play wearing them. Coach had seen Pat wear them the year before when Pat tried out for the team, and he knew that Pat did not make the team. You will also hear from Adrian Dove today. Adrian Dove has been a colleague of Coach White's for three years. She will testify that she heard Coach White ranting and raving about Pat Barron's article on November 7th, the day before he was cut from the team. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, after hearing all evidence today, plaintiff will prove that after becoming aware of Pat Barron's article, Coach White, in retaliation, arbitrarily cut Pat Barron from the Alvo basketball team, denying him his First Amendment rights, which he possesses under the United States Constitution. But if you are not convinced that Pat was removed from the team because of the article, plaintiff is still entitled to judgment in his favor because of his handicap. We will prove that Pat Barron is competent and willing to assume the risks of injury. And after all evidence has been heard, we ask that you grant the injunction that we're convinced it's worth damages. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Would the defense like to make an opening statement at this point, or do you wish to reserve that for later in the trial? We'd like to make it now, Your Honor. Very well. You may proceed with the opening statement, counsel. Good afternoon, Your Honor, members of the jury. I'm Joe Savage, and these are my co-counsels, Michelle Wirth and Rebecca Braulio. Together, we represent the defendant, Coach Bobby White. This is a civil case you're hearing today where the plaintiff, Pat Barron, accused the defendant, Coach Bobby White, of dismissing him from the Alamo High basketball team because of an article he wrote in the high school newspaper criticizing the Bush administration and the bombing of the Persian Gulf. The plaintiff will tell 
Sony's favor, they can consent. But their reason why that was moved from the team. But as usual, there are two sides to every story. Members of the jury, it did have a pat there in the slide. Between October the 22nd and October the 29th, Coach Bobby White held tryouts for the Alpha High's best ball team, 1990 season. Among those who tried out for the team was the plaintiff, Pat Barron. Because of Pat's abilities, he was provisionally accepted onto the best ball team. But before a player can be officially accepted onto the team, he must successfully complete a physical examination. Pat Barron received his physical examination by Dr. Provider. During this examination, Dr. Provider discovered something that Pat already knew, that he was blind in one eye. Dr. Provider threw a bit before Coach White of what she discovered, Pat's blindness. Coach White consulted both the principal and Dr. Provider as to what she should do. They left the decision of the coach. This was a difficult decision for her, but with the question of Pat's safety and goals, she had to make a decision in favor of Pat's safety. Coach White said Pat could have been on the team if he wore protective goggles. Pat refused to wear the protective goggles. Pat and his parents offered to release the coach of any liability if Pat were hurt. But Coach White is not concerned about her release on liability. She is concerned about the safety of Pat Barron. The defense will prove to you that, that Coach White has not violated Pat's rights to freedom of speech. The defense will also prove that Coach White has not violated Pat's rights under the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. Members of the jury, there are two paths in this case. One path leading to a verdict in favor of the plaintiff. Another path leading to a verdict in favor of the defense. The evidence in this case, the facts in this case, will lead you down the path to a verdict in favor of the defense. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Would the plaintiff like to call their first witness at this point? Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff calls Patrick Barron. Very well. Mr. Barron, come forward, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Quinn. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my name is Maria Quinn. State your full name. Patrick Barron. Spell your name. B-A-R-R-O-N. Can you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I will. Please be seated and keep your voice up. Good afternoon, Mr. Barron. Good afternoon. Mr. Barron, where do you live? I live in Alba, Pennsylvania with my parents. I attend Alba High School. Besides your regular schoolwork, are you involved in any extracurricular activities? Yes, I am. I'm a contributing editor with my school newspaper, and I also play a lot of sports. What sports do you play? I play all kinds of sports. Basketball is my favorite, though. Did you ever play in any organized leagues? Well, I used to. I played in an organized basketball league as well as an organized soccer league, but I quit when I was around 13. Why? What happened at age 13? You see, when I was 13, I was involved in this freak accident. I was out with a few of my friends one day. We were fooling around, and I got hit in the eye with a ball. I lost a sight in my left eye, and I haven't recovered it since that day. When did you resume your sports activities? Well, it wasn't right away. I was really nervous. I just got hurt. I didn't want to get hurt again. And my parents were very concerned for me. But I decided that I couldn't let this one incident stop my whole life. I had to go on with my life. So I practiced really hard, and I focused all my energies on getting my life back on track and making the basketball team the next year. When did you first achieve success as an athlete? Well, it was that next year when I was 15. I tried out for the basketball team, and I not only made the team, but I became the team's captain as well as the team's second highest scorer. Being so successful, did you continue to pursue basketball in high school? Well, I wanted to. I tried out for the team when I was a sophomore. How did you do? Well, I didn't do that well. You see, at the time, I was wearing protective goggles, and it was then that I truly realized how much they greatly impaired my vision. Did you try again? Well, of course. Basketball is very important to me. But this time, I tried uh, to make the team without my goggles. I faced my fear. How did you do without the goggles? I did very well. In fact, this time, I made the team. What happened immediately after you made the team? I took a physical. When was that? 
On November 2nd. Did you pass this physical exam? Of course. How can you be sure? Well, it's a team rule. If you don't pass the physical, you can't play on the team. I was still playing on the team, so I passed the physical. What happened then? Well, Objection, Your Honor. The witness came to a conclusion. Counsel, did you respond to the objection? Yes, Your Honor. The witness has played basketball with Goggles and with Dale. Therefore, it's a conclusion to me. Well, I'll, I'll sustain the objection. I, I think the witness can testify as to what happened, but his conclusion as to whether he passed the physical is a speculation. So I'll sustain the objection. Continue. Your Honor, may I have you heard? Sure. Um, Mr. Barron made the team contingent on passing his physical exam. And when he was allowed to continue to practice, it was believed that he did pass the exam. May I be heard? Well, Counsel, my ruling is certain. He's free to testify that he took the medical examination. And I'll even give you a lead for him to state his opinion that he felt he had passed. I'm sustaining the other objection on the basis that he doesn't know for a fact that's the case. Okay, thank you. I'll allow you to give that opinion. Your Honor, we're just striking. Well, I'll, I'll strike that portion where he's saying he definitely passed the exam. I'll allow him to testify in his opinion that he probably passed the exam, because that's why he was picked for the team. Yeah. Okay, Counsel, move on. Yeah. You're up. Um, Mr. Barron, what happened then? Well, then I continued to do as I normally did. I went to school. I practiced after school. Everything was fine until November 8th. Why? What happened on November 8th? Well, you see, on the 8th, Coach White called me to her office. She told me that she wanted to speak to me about something. Briefly tell the jury about that meeting. Well, on the 8th, Coach White called me to her office. She told me that I was dangerous. She told me that I posed a threat to myself as well as to other players because of my visual impairment. What was your reaction? Well, I couldn't believe it. She told me that if I didn't wear protective goggles, I was going to be cut from the team. Did you say anything? Well, of course I did. I wanted the coach to hear my point of view. I told the coach I couldn't wear the goggles. I can't play with them on. Was that the end of your conversation with Coach White? No, it was not. I told the coach that she was so worried about me getting hurt that my parents would sign a waiver that would release the school from any responsibility if I got hurt. What did Coach White think about the waiver? Well, she wouldn't change her mind. Mr. Barron, do you know why you were cut from the team? Well, Coach White told me it was because that I wouldn't wear the protective goggles. But I know it was because of the article I wrote. What article? The article that was published on November 7th about the Persian Gulf. What was this article about? This article was about my feelings, about President Bush's commitment of troops in the Persian Gulf. I'm opposed to this action. Your Honor, may I show opposing counsel what has been pre-marked Exhibit 1? It's the editorial written by Patrick Barron. Certainly. Proceed. Your Honor, let the record reflect that I'm showing opposing counsel a copy of Exhibit 1. Very well. Counsel, do you need a minute to review that before the question continues? Have you had an opportunity to review that document? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Your Honor, would you like to see a copy? Yes. Do you have a copy? Yes. Appreciate that, counsel. Thank you. May I approach the witness? Certainly. Mr. Barron, show me what has been pre-marked Exhibit 1. Please examine it. Do you recognize it? Of course. What is it? It's my motion to the editorial. Is this a true and accurate interpretation of your article? Yes, it is. Mr. Barron, where was this editorial published? In our school newspaper. And when was it published? On November 7th. Was there any reaction to your article around the school? Yeah, you can say it did cause quite a debate. A lot of people in the school were talking about it. In fact, my best friend on the basketball team came up to me. Objection, Your Honor. This is calling for hearsay. Your Honor. Did you hear the respond? He did not. I mean, at this point, just coming up to him is not technically objectionable, but obviously the statement of his friend is going to be repeated. Your Honor, he's merely going to say what his friend thought, but not what he said. His feelings. Your Honor, may I be heard? Yes, counsel. The question was asked is what the reaction was, what was said about the school about it, and I do believe he was answering the question, and that's asking for hearsay. I mean, at this point, technically speaking, the question was did the friend come up to him? Was there a reaction around the school about the paper? And did he testify his friend came up to him and there was an objection? Yes. Well, I mean, I think the witness can testify as a result of conversations he had with his friend, what if anything he did, or how he felt, but I'll sustain the objection as to any statements that the friend may have made. Okay. So we'll proceed on that basis. Mr. Barron, you were talking about the article. Yes. Did you 
talking about the reaction around the school of that paper. Well, it did cause quite a debate. A lot of people were talking about it. Does everyone in school receive a copy of the newspaper? Yes. Do you know Coach White received the newspaper? I'm absolutely sure of it. How can you be so sure? Well, when I went to the meeting on November 8th, there was a copy of the school newspaper in his office. What page of the newspaper was open? It was open to the page I'm holding in my hand. The page my editorial was on. Did you ever ask Coach White about your article? No, I did not. When I first went into the office, I was going to ask her. But in the course of the whole day, I got upset and distracted, and I never talked to her about it. Did Coach White ever say anything to you about the paper? Yes, she did. As soon as she was done telling me that I was cut from the basketball team, she told me that I should focus my energies on less dangerous activities, like writing for the school newspaper. Mr. Brown, when was this comment made? On November 8th, the day I was cut from the team, and the day after my article was published. Your Honor, we have no further questions from this witness. Plaintiff asked for the three marks to give the form he moves into evidence. Very well, counsel, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Very well, P1 will be admitted to the evidence. Your Honor, may I publish P1 to the jury? Counsel, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Very well, sir. May the jury review that document? Did the jury would like to take a minute to review the document before counsel continues the question? That's right, Your Honor. Very well. Counsel, apparently the jury is willing for you to proceed. Do you have any further questions? No. Oh, very well. Does counsel for the defense have any cross-examination that you would like to make at this point? Pat, isn't it true that Coach White was unaware of your partial blindness when she provisionally accepted you onto her team? Yes. Now, after discovering your disability, Coach White still offered you the opportunity to play on this team, didn't she? Yes, but it was an opportunity I couldn't accept. Now, that day in the office, Coach White said that she was concerned about the sight in your right eye, didn't she? Yes, that's what she said, but I don't believe her. Now, this isn't the first time you've had to leave the sports team because of this blindness, is it? No. You were dismissed from the summer league team because of this very same eye injury? Yes. Now, this eye injury happened while you were hit in the eye by a ball. Yes, when I was 13. And because of this, you are now permanently blind in that eye? Yes, I think so. Now, Pat, when it comes down to it, you never saw Coach White read your Persian Gulf article, did you? I was only with the coach that day when she called for me. I didn't know what she did the rest of the day. You never saw Coach White pick up the article? Not when I was in her office, no. Coach White never even discussed this article with you, isn't that true? Not specifically, no. So it's nothing more than your assumption that Coach White ever read this article, correct? I know she read that article. It's nothing more than your assumption. Yes, Your Honor, I can answer. Counsel, do you care to respond to the objection? Yes, I do. The question has been asked, but not adequately answered. Counsel, do you have any further comments? Your Honor, I feel that this witness answered the question. There was a yes-no question as to whether this witness felt that Coach White had read the article. The witness responded yes. Well, if this is cross-examination, I'm going to give counsel some latitude. It's all over with the objection. Proceed, Counsel. Once again, Pat, it is nothing more than your biased assumption that Coach White ever read this article. Isn't that true? As I said, I know the coach read that article. No further questions. Thank you, Counsel. Would you like to step down? Yes, Your Honor. Does the plaintiff have any additional witnesses they would like to call in their case in chief? Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff calls Adrian Bell. Very well. State your full name. Adrian Bell. Spell your last name. B-O-B-E. You will tell me the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I will. Counsel, would you like to proceed?